Hey everybody, it's Jonathan. Right now the risks in the overall market are elevated. And they're elevated because we're getting darn close to being in an environment with an inverted yield curve. So what I did is June 14th right here, I put out a video to my members talking about the elevated risks in the market. You can click here to watch that video. The reason I bring it up now is because in a discussion with a few of my coaching clients, we were going over a great article that was released by the New York Times yesterday. And I thought it'd be beneficial for everybody if we go over that article, just so you can see the past impl implications of an inverted yield curve and why I'm so concerned. Now, quick caveat to that. Now, being concerned doesn't mean the market's going to crash and I think the S&Ps are going down to 2300 That's not the point. The point for trading and for investing is to keep your head up and to anticipate where risks might be. So right here, right now, I'm extremely bearish the overall market. I'm extremely bullish on certainty, volatility. So even if I'm wrong, I still want to protect my trading account. And right now, more than times past, I am extremely bearish. I'm extremely concerned with risks. And this New York Times article really lays it out perfectly. So let's go over that. So here we go. Written by Matt Phillips. What's the yield curve? A powerful signal of recessions has Wall Street's attention. Okay. They talk about the trade wars. The so-called yield curve is perilously close to predicting a recession. Something that has done before with surprisingly with surprising accuracy. So let's talk about the yield curve. The yield curve, it's just the difference between interest rates. So if you look at the yield curve two year out to 10 year, the yield curve price is the difference between twos and tens. If two year eight, uh, rates and 10 year rates were exactly the same, it would be a flat yield curve. If we look at the yield curve going back to 2010, started up here, which would be two and a half. And this is a flattening. This time period here, these little moves here, these are steepeners. What this is showing is the difference between the two year and 10 year rate. If I take you over to treasury.gov, you could see the same thing. So if we go to June 1st, the two year 2.47, the 10 year 2.85. So right there, you're going to see what a 0.38 difference. But as we scroll closer to present day, so we go on the 22nd, the 10 year, I guess this was the 10 year 289 against 247. So what 0.42. Now we're at 2.56 against 2.9. It's 0.34, right? It's just 2.9 minus 2.56. Continuing, continuing to flatten. As prices go higher, yields go lower. And that is what they're displaying right here. Again, the difference between twos and tens. As bond traders, we want to look at the difference between two year rates and 10 year rates, but we could also look at the difference between two year rates and five year rates, five year rates and seven year rates, seven year rates and 10 year rates, five year, 10 year all these different combinations. And that's what bond traders try to do is they try to take out any kind of kink in the yield curve. So if twos and tens are getting closer together, but yet the five year hasn't really changed, maybe that presents an interesting trade opportunity in the five year. Let's continue with the read. On Thursday, the gap between two year and 10 year, 0.34. It was last at these levels in 2007. When the United States economy was headed into what was arguably the worst recession in 80 years again, that is exactly why we're bearish. That's exactly why we are very concerned with the risks of the market. Recession, recession scary. Eventually, long term interest rates will fall below short term rates if things keep moving in the same direction. When that happens, the yield curve has inverted. So inverted example would be the 10 year trading two and a half percent and the two year trading 2.6, 2.7. That yield curve's inverted. 
an inversion is seen as a powerful signal of recessions. As John Williams said, the president of the New York Fed earlier this year, this is where it gets a little crazy. Every recession of the past 60 years has been preceded by an inverted yield curve. Curve inversions have correctly signaled all nine recessions. But yet, if we go back right now, these markets are darn close to taking out their all-time highs. The risks are elevated. That's why the market's pulling off. Yes, tariffs. Yes, U.S. uncertainty with Trump. But right now, with this flattening of the yield curve, there is too much risk in the market. Heck, it's predicted every recession going back 60 years. Now, the article follows up. Should we be worried? Unemployment's at an 18-year low. Sure, the economy is strong, but the yield curve is telling a different story. Goes into the practical impact. The yield curve helps determine some of the decisions that are most crucial to the health of the American economy. The flattening yield curve makes banking, which is basically the business of borrowing money at short-term rates and lending it at long-term rates less profitable. If the yield curve inverts, it means lending money becomes a losing proposition. So, traders out there, what about following the yield curve? If it continues to invert, looking for banks that are relatively expensive to other banks, expecting a pullback. Lots of ways traders can follow the yield curve. One of them is just through futures. What you can do in Thinkorswim or really any platform that you have is just do a factor, two year times two minus 10 year. To get the right factor, you can go to the CME site, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, exchange site and find the section under exchange and then find the section under intercommodity spreads. So here the tut two year versus the 10 year two by one. You can look at two year against the 30 year. That's going to be five by one. So if I go back to the charts two by one ZT times two. So that's giving me that double of the two year against one of the 10 year. If I wanted to look at two year against 30 year, that would be five against ZB. And if we look, get some more data on the chart, here's what the yield curve looks like, the difference between two year and 30 year. So even if you're not trading bonds, I encourage you to keep these charts up so you can follow the behavior of the yield curve intraday. Now, getting back to the article, there's an argument to be made against reading too much into the yield curve. But from a trader's perspective, what we need to do is protect our account, right? What we're looking to do is hedge against risk. So even if this plays out and the yield curve doesn't have the influence that it's had in the past, the lesson for traders has got to be protect your account. Nine times the darn things got inverted. We've gone into a recession. Protect your account. Maybe it won't happen this time, but sure seems like the odds or the trend is moving in that way. So what does it hurt to buy a little bit of insurance? So there you have it. Hey, thanks, Matt Phillips. If I get you to watch this, great article. We had a great discussion about this in my advanced bond room. If anybody else wants to learn about how to trade bond futures, how to trade the yield curve, please email me at support at Active Day Trader. Finally, I'll leave the links to this video in the description in the YouTube video so you guys can access the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, those sites and ratios, but also I'll leave this great article by Matt Phillips of the New York Times. Thanks for watching. My name is Jonathan Rose, owner of Active Day Trader.